dress him in the morning so you'll meet the vine dresser. So he did. He said he got up and had his breakfast and went out the next day, and he was kind of standing at the edge of this vineyard looking around. He said, an amazing thing, you could see all over the valleys, and you could see the big wine companies, the big, you know, warehouses, the big businesses. And he said he was standing there and said, all of a sudden, this old man bent over with a cane, said he just came walking by. Didn't say hey to him or anything. He said he walked down into the middle of that little vineyard, and he said, all of a sudden, he started singing. And he said, my thought was, I am really in a cuckoo place here, buddy. Here's a man singing to these grapes. And he said, he just sang and sang. And he said, all of a sudden, as he sang, he began to put his hands on the grapes and feel them as he would walk by. Up and down this little vine, this little vineyard. And he said, he went down every one. Singing, singing. He said, I just stood there. I said, is he ever going to say anything to me? He said, he didn't pay a bit of attention to me. He said, he just sang. And he said, came lunchtime. He came in and they said, have you met the vine dresser? He said, well, I guess I have. <laughs> he said, yeah, just let him, he'll show you what to do. So the next morning he came out and did the same thing. This time he had a little tiny pair of snips. And he said he began to go along and he'd snip this little thing and snip this and snip this and snip this. And he said the interesting thing about him, if there was a new shoot that was weak, he would take an older, stronger vine and put it under it to give the new vine support. He said he'd go along and sing and he'd snip. Sing and he'd snip, he'd support those weaker vines. And he said, God began to speak to me. He said, You watch him. He said, you really watch him and you'll see me. He said, You want to see the heart of the Father? Watch him. He said, He was so faithful to sing and to snip and to support. He said, But as the summer progressed, there was no rain. And he said it began a drought began to hit that area. And he said he saw the big companies down below get out their big irrigation system and were the big, you know, fanning the air and they were watering their grapes and everything. And he said he watched our grapes. He said and they began to shrivel. He said the vines began to curl and they began to shrivel. And he said I would tell him, he said, if you don't do something about these grapes, we are going to lose everything. He said he'd kind of smile and acted like he didn't understand what I was saying. And he said he would finally one day, he said, I got real adamant. I said, you better do something or they're all going to die and they're not going to be worth anything. He said, he turned to me. He said, son, don't you know that grapes that suffer produce the sweetest wine? He said the next day he had a bucket with a ladle in it, and he just put a little water at the base of each one of the main roots. He said, and some leaves fell off. He said, all of a sudden, these grapes somehow began to get revived. See, most of you, if you've got any age on you, Raised in a maybe charismatic blend of theology that said, you'll never suffer. <laughs> you can name it and claim it. And God is a provider. He wants to provide for you. He wants to bless you. But we've got to get our thinking straightened with him. Hear me, people. You will suffer. If you're going to be conformed to his image. We love the scriptures that says the joy of his resurrection. Amen. See, God approved. <laughs> what was that? Oh, okay. And we don't like that part. The power of his resurrection.
resurrection, and we don't like the fellowship of what? His suffering. Now, I don't know how you might have to experience suffering, but you will. I don't know if it's going to be physically. I don't know if it's going to be some kind of financial stress. I don't know what it's going to be, but somehow, some way, God's going to allow suffering to come in your life, and it's not to kill you, it's to make you. Because you cannot have the compassion and understanding unless you know the suffering that comes with this walk. I personally think, you might not like this, but I personally think you are fixing to really be tested on what you believe. I believe it's going to be a costly thing to be able to stand up and proclaim Jesus Christ. There are things in the works now to shut you up. They look good, but if you understand it and read it, it's evil. I'm not telling you that to make you afraid. I'm telling you it's time to know what you believe, know who you are, and not be afraid to do it. The sweetest wine comes from those who experience suffering. Did Jesus suffer? Yes, he suffered the worst of physical agony, didn't he? Did he suffer mentally? No, he was God. Yes, he suffered mentally. His heart broke over the city of Jerusalem. He had compassion For those who had gathered to hear him preach and they had nothing to eat or drink. Jesus understood what it's like. He said the interesting thing about this vine dresser, he oversaw the harvest too. He said there was no debris his grapes. He said he also had something in the design of the bottle the wine went into. And said he put his name proudly on the bottle. Mm. So, how did he get there? By a narrow path top of a mountain. I believe only as we walk in those narrow paths do we get in touch with the heart of God. My goodness, the world looks so good on the wild path. It looks enticing. But it's not where God is. Number four, new gate. That gate was put in there so King Hussein could drive his Mercedes-Benz car into that part of the city. And what hangs around the new gate right now are mostly Russian immigrants. And most of them are alcoholic. And the lesson I could convey to you from this is 